Okay, so in this video, we want to talk about the EMF induced by changing angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. So normally, how do we change the angle between B and A? Normally, we will rotate the coin. So for example, a 215 turns planar coil with a surface area of 25 cm square is placed in a uniform magnetic field B of 2.05 Tesla. Initially, the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the field. The coil is then rotated about an axis perpendicular to the magnetic field with a period of 0.16 seconds. Determine the initial magnetic flux linkage with the coil. Okay, so initially, you know that the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the field. And then I also told you that the area vector must be perpendicular to the surface area at all points. So you know that at this time, the A and B are in the same direction. Okay, that means that when the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the magnetic field, for example, if this is the axis of rotation, then it will rotate like this, okay? Okay, because this is the axis of rotation. So, phi equal to mba cos theta, where the theta is the angle between b and area vector, okay? And then theta equal to omega t, where the omega is the angular velocity, okay? So initially, you know that b and a are parallel, okay? Initially, b and area vector are parallel. So the angle is 0. So cos theta equal to, cos 0 equal to 1, okay? So the phi equal to mba. Then you can get the phi equal to 1.1 verbal. So derive the induced EMF in the coil at time t. Okay, you know that phi equal to this one, right? MBA cos omega t. You differentiate this with respect to time. And then you don't forget about the negative sign because the negative sign represents Lenz law. Okay, so when you differentiate cos function, you get negative sine function. So you know that the negative sign is cancelled out already. Okay, so what is omega? Omega is angular velocity which is okay the angular frequency okay so omega equal to 2 pi f equal to 2 pi over t okay where the t capital t is period so you substitute everything then you can express the induced emf in a sine function and then you notice that actually for the sine function you know that the maximum value of the sine function is 1. The minimum value of sine function is negative 1. Okay, so you know that when we are considering this back EMF, when we are considering the magnitude, normally we will ignore the sine function because we already know the maximum value for sine function is 1. Minimum value for sine function is negative 1. Okay, so this only represents the sinusoidal function of the back EMF only. Okay, but then when we want to consider the magnitude, we only look at the omega and ba. So you know that the back EMF is directly proportional to omega, which is directly proportional to f, which is the frequency of the rotation of the coil. So that means that if you want your induced EMF to be larger and larger, then you just rotate the coil faster and faster. Okay? And then I want to remind you that b is back. Okay? Back EMF is the induced EMF. Okay? Actually, back EMF has the opposite polarity with the EMF of the battery. That's why I use a negative sign here, okay? But it's okay, I will remind you this later on. Okay, so this is the direct current motor, which is DC motor. And then inside the direct current motor, we have a coil, and then the coil can rotate. Okay, so this is the EMF of the battery, which is denoted as V0. This is resistance, this is the switch. At time equal to zero, you know that the motor coil is at rest. That means that the motor coil has not rotated yet. So there's no back EMF. So at this time, when you just close the switch S, there's no back EMF yet. So V0 equal to IR. Okay. At any time later, when the coil starts to rotate, and then when the coil rotates at a maximum speed, there's now back EMF. And then you know that the back EMF has 
and opposite polarity to the EMF of the battery. So you say that V0 minus EB, not V0 plus EB. Yeah? Okay, so V0 minus EB equal to IR. So you know that just now without the back EMF, V0 is very large and therefore I is very large. But then now you have to minus V0 by EB. Therefore, I decreases. So you know that the faster the coil rotates, the larger the back EMF, the smaller the current in the direct current circuit. Okay, And then you know that the current will drop when there's back EMF. And then when you multiply this equation with I, V0 I is input power given by the battery. EBI, which is back EMF times I, is the output power. And then I square R is the power loss, which is the heat dissipated by the resistance per unit time. Okay, so you know that input power is equal to the heat dissipated plus the output power. So this is actually the energy conservation. Okay, so for the efficiency of a direct current motor, efficiency equal to output power divided by input power. So which is EB divided by V0. So you know that when the coil is rotating faster and faster, the back EMF is getting larger and larger. So the efficiency of the direct current motor is getting larger and larger. Okay. A direct current motor draws an initial current of 1.2 ampere from a 3 volt battery at the moment it switched on. The current is 0 0.84 ampere when the armature of the motor spins at a speed of 45 revolutions per second. When this motor is loaded, it spins at 25 revolutions per second. Please determine the resistance of the armature of coil of the motor. Okay, so initially you know that the EMF of the battery is 3 volt. Initially, the current is 1.2 ampere, which is the maximum current. Okay, so you can get the resistance. Find the back EMF produced when the motor spins at 45 revolutions per second. So when the motor is spinning, you know that there is now back EMF. Okay, just now you don't have back EMF yet because the coil has not spin yet. Okay, but then when it now spins you know that there's back emf okay so the potential difference drops okay just now the potential difference is v0 now the potential difference is v0 minus eb so you know that the current will drop and then the current now is 0 0.84 ampere and then you get the r just now so you can find the back emf the upper power of the motor at 45 revolutions per second okay what is the upper power upper power is ebi input power is v0 i and then the i square r is heat dissipated okay so you can get the upper power okay please find the back emf at 25 revolutions per second okay so you know that the back emf is directly proportional to frequency okay how do you know okay because just now you already get the expression so you say that the back EMF is directly proportional to the frequency, which is the rotation met by the coil per second. Okay, so you know that the faster it spins, the greater the back EMF. Okay, so you can get the back EMF at 25 revolutions per second, which is 0 0.5 volt. When power is supplied to an electric motor, the motor armature rotates in a magnetic field and an induced EMF is generated, which statement about the motor is not true. The induced EMF opposes the EMF supply, yet because the induced EMF is EB and then the EMF supply is V0, so you know that V0 minus EB because that EB opposes V0. The induced EMF is greater than the EMF supply. No, actually, no matter how fast the coil rotates, you know that there is an upper limit to the frequency of the rotating coil. That means that you know that V0 is always bigger than EB. Okay, that means that EB is always smaller than V0. Okay, so induced EMF EB is always smaller than the EMF supply, which is V0. Okay, so you know that there is always an upper repeat limit to how fast the coil can rotate. That means that let's say if your battery can only supply you, for example, okay, for example, if your battery can only supply you 3 volt, definitely you cannot expect your coil to be moved. To be moving so fast right because you are only giving me three volt how fast can the coil 
can get. Okay, so you know that the rotation frequency of the coil always depends on the maximum potential difference that you can give to the motor. And then you really have to remember that V0 is always greater than EB. Okay, so EB is always smaller than V0. The induced EMF is maximum when the armature rotates with a maximum speed. Okay, just now you already know that the faster the coil rotates, the higher the back EMF. Okay, so this is correct. The voltage difference across the armature is smaller than the EMF supplied. Okay, so the potential difference across the armature is V0 minus EB. EMF supplied is V0. So of course you know that V0 minus EB is always smaller than V0. Okay, so this is true. Back EMF is induced in a spinning electric motor. Which statement about the back EMF is not true? It reduces the electric power supply to the motor. Okay, yes. When there's no back EMF, the power supply to the motor is V0I. But then when there is back EMF, the electric power supply to the motor is V0 minus EB bracket I. Okay, so you know that the back EMF can really reduce the electric power supply to the motor. The back EMF has a bigger value when the motor starts to spin. Okay, no, when the motor starts to spin, it spins very slowly. So you know that the magnitude now is smaller. But then at a at a time later, that means that when time is increasing, you know that the motor can really rotate faster and faster until a certain maximum limit. Okay, so you know that the magnitude is smaller when the motor starts to spin, but the magnitude is largest when the motor is spinning at the largest angular frequency. The direction of the back EMF is opposite to the direction of voltage supply. Definitely. Okay, that's why you use a negative sign. If the direction is really along the direction of the voltage supply, then you, you, you will use V0 plus EB equal to IR. But then this is not correct, okay? Because it's opposite. That's why you use negative. It is generated when an armature coil undergoes a magnetic flux change. Okay, you know that from the Faraday's law, the EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Okay, so when there's a change in the magnetic flux, Definitely there's some induced EMF. Okay, induced EMF is called back EMF. A plane of conducting loop which has a rectangular shape is placed perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field. The loop is connected to a resistor of resistance R. Which of the following will not cause an induced current to flow in the loop? Okay, so in order to produce an EMF, you have to change the magnetic flux linkage either by changing the magnitude of B or changing the magnitude of A or changing the angle between B and A. Okay, so if you decrease or increase the area of the loop, of course it can help you to generate an induced current. If you want to rotate a loop, the loop about an axis perpendicular to the plane of paper. Okay, so this is your plane of paper. Okay, so the axis perpendicular to the plane of paper is this. If you want to rotate the loop about this rotational axis, then you are rotating it like this. Okay, if you rotate it like this, the angle between B and A is still in the is still into the pitch. So you are not changing the direction of the area vector. Therefore, the direction of the area vector is still parallel to the direction of magnetic field. Therefore, by doing this, you cannot generate an induced current. Okay, so by rotating this way, you cannot generate an induced current. Only by rotating this way, or by rotating this way, then only you can generate an induced current, okay? Because by rotating this way and by rotating this way, you are changing the direction of the area vector. But then by rotating this way, you know the direction of the area vector is still into the page, so you cannot change the angle between A and B. Increase or decrease the magnitude of the magnetic flux density can help you to generate an induced current, okay? Pull the loop to a region with no magnetic field at all immediately, okay? This is equivalent to 
decreasing the magnitude of magnetic flux density B to zero immediately. Okay, so of course this can also help you to generate an induced current. Okay. So until now, you already learned three different methods to induce the EMF. And then this is exactly electromagnetic induction because you want to generate the induced EMF. Okay. So in the next video, we will talk about the self-inductance and energy store inside an inductor. Thank you.